If you have mature spinach, kale, carrots, parsley, cilantro, radishes, turnips, or green onions in your garden in October, don't rip them out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I harvest all those crops till Christmas without storing them. I'm Zach Buckle. I own Farm Table West, which is this one third of an acre vegetable farm just outside of Cody, Wyoming. And we harvest fresh vegetables 12 months a year in our 120 day frost free growing season using the exact same techniques I'm gonna talk about in this video. And if you're serious about growing food in your backyard, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how to set up a simple no dig version of this farm in your backyard in four easy steps. So this process started all the way back in July and it's October now. Technically, I planted that kale back in April. I should say seeded that kale because what I mean by planting is actually doing what I'm doing now, just filling up plant trays every week and filling them with seeds according to our fall planting schedule, which I'm gonna leave a link to in the description below on how you could do this in your garden. But I do that every single week with a pretty good idea of how much I'm gonna need at the time that we're harvesting and just stick to that. And I actually plant more than we need because you never know what you're gonna have available in garden space by the time you plant. So it's always better to seed or start ahead of time a lot more plants than you need because you might have more space to plant them at the time of transplanting than you think when you first start them. And so once we have a bunch of plants seeded and growing, they come into our nursery, which is what you see here, and they grow for three to four weeks and then they're halfway grown by the time we put them in the ground. So here we have a little bit of spinach and green onions that could go into the ground right now, but there actually isn't enough time left right now to plant these. This is just left over from the season. But throughout the growing season, this whole nursery was filled with plants that we basically use as ammo to put in the ground whenever we had an open space. And my fall planting schedule is this exact document, which is a little more complicated than you need for your garden. So I have a much simpler version at the link in the description below. And basically every single week, one of our tasks on the farm is to seed all of the plants that need to be seeded at that time. So I go over here to our fall planting schedule and I look at what I can plant because with fall planting, you have a much shorter time window to get the seeding right. So it's really important that you get it on time. So if I wanted to plant a fall crop of radishes, I need to make sure that whatever time I'm planting them is before the date that I have on here. Because if it's after, the radishes will not mature by September 21st, which is our average first frost date. So on here, small radishes, I have up until August 16th to put those in the ground and get a crop. And if you wanted to do a nursery in your living room, I have a really easy way to do it with LED grow lights that I talk about in the free garden starter guide below. And I have a full video explanation of that at our garden course, which is also linked below if you are interested in that. Because you could do exactly the same concept in your living room without all this fancy infrastructure. You just need a really nice warm place to start plants and make it quicker for them to grow in the field. So after the plants were fully grown in the nursery, the next task that we have every single week is to transplant those plants into the field, wherever we have an open bed like this. So you can use the same concept in your garden. Whenever you have an open spot in your garden, if you have the plants ready to go, they can get planted in that spot and grow twice as fast than if you were just to throw a seed in there. So that's a strategy we use all the time in our 120 day growing season to double the amount of food that we grow in the same space. Now that doesn't apply to absolutely every crop, 
these green onions were transplanted, these parsley plants were transplanted, but these Tokyo Bacana salad mixes were not transplanted because they grow fast enough. We can literally just throw a seed directly in the ground and this will mature in about 18 to 25 days. So there's no point in us even starting a transplant. And it all goes back to that planting schedule that we have that has every crop that we want at this time, which is late fall, almost early winter. And as long as we seed that crop, whether it's in a plant tray in our nursery or directly in the ground before the date on that calendar, I know that we will almost guaranteed have a crop by our last day of our frost-free growing season. So if you follow that fall planting schedule at the link in the description below, you will be able to do the exact same thing in your climate. You just have to plug in your average first frost date. And this concept allows us to have mature plants in the ground by this time that will be able to withstand the cold. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So at this point, everything left in this field can withstand at least a light frost. And to be honest, it's more like a hard frost because we've already had temperatures down to 29 degrees for pretty much the entire night and everything in this field is still totally harvestable, sellable, and delicious. And that was all part of the plan. And it comes from experience of knowing when the crops are mature in your climate. And I've done this for a couple years, so I'm getting better at it every year. And this year turned out pretty well. But to go over a little bit about what we have in what I call inventory in the field, I'm gonna point out what crop is where. So over here, we have a whole 50 foot bed of carrots that we will be harvesting into November, possibly December, but we have enough in our greenhouse. We probably don't need to wait that long, but we'll be harvesting those as it gets colder for the next couple weeks. We have a whole three 50 foot beds of kale that we actually transplanted back in May that's technically been producing all season for us. And we just slowed down the harvests in the last month to let them grow. So we have a nice inventory of about 75 pounds of fresh kale that we can harvest into December. Then we have this bed of celery, which we're gonna harvest pretty soon because this cannot take that deep of a cold. We'll be harvesting this probably next week. We have the Tokyo Bacana salad mix that I mentioned earlier, that's gonna last probably till Thanksgiving, but we'll harvest enough to last us then. And then we have a bunch in our greenhouses, but that's really cold hardy, could last till Christmas if we wanted to. Green onions, same thing. We have two 50 foot beds of those left. We have a little bit of beets left that we'll harvest next week. We have one 50 foot bed of Swiss chard that'll last us for another couple weeks. And that's probably about 15 pounds of chard right there. And a 50 foot bed of parsley that probably has 20, 30 pounds of parsley in it left that will last us for another couple weeks. We also have a couple beds of cilantro and dill over here uh, that will last for about another month. And it is October 24th. So that's quite a bit longer into the growing season than you might expect for cilantro and dill. They could take a lot of cold. We have this bed of spinach, that's 20, 30 pounds of spinach for the next couple of weeks. And this bed of radishes, probably about 20 pounds of radishes left there uh, that we'll go ahead and harvest next week because that cannot take that much cold. But the point I'm making here is everything you see in this field is inventory. And I look at it like inventory because it's not really gonna grow any much anymore now. It's just sitting there waiting to be harvested. So all we did on our end was plant it and grow it at the right time. So it doesn't take us any effort to store this stuff other than harvesting it before it gets too cold, which you have to do anyway. If you're gonna store any crop, you have to harvest it. So harvesting is the easy part, canning and preparing food to be stored through the winter takes a lot of work. So any way that we can cut down that work on our farm makes us a lot more profitable because we do not have time to can food on this farm and still be profitable. So this is a strategy you can use in your garden to really stretch your growing season, or I should say harvest season, because that's really all that matters when you're growing food is your harvest season, not the growing season. Because we have 
the shortest growing season in the US here in Wyoming. 120 days, if you look at it, is the shortest of all 50 states. Every other state has a little bit longer to a lot longer frost-free days to grow food. Now there's a lot that goes into growing seasons I'm not gonna go into here, but frost-free days is a fairly general way to say how long you have to grow your food. And the key word is grow your food. Harvesting your food you can do all year round if you're really good and you have some more protection than this field and you have greenhouses. But even without the greenhouses, you can do exactly what I'm talking about pretty easily. All you need to do is grow it at the right time. And you don't even have to do everything according to that fall planting schedule. The chard and the kale were all planted around April 8th. They were seeded around April 8th, I should say, and transplanted around May 15th. Those produced for us all season long and we didn't have to replant them at all. So that takes it even more work off our shoulders because everything else I mentioned was replanted in the middle of the season, which does take some effort. But if you have open space in your garden and you have plants ready to go and really quick growing seeds like radishes, arugula, Tokyo bacana that can be thrown directly in your garden, watered, and grown to maturity in around 30 days, you have the opportunity to grow a whole second crop and harvest it deep into your late fall, early winter period. And again, we live in a really cold climate. We have already gotten really cold nights, 26 degrees, and we're gonna be getting 23 next week. And I'm still very confident everything in here will be fine. Almost everything in here will be fine. We're gonna harvest the stuff that's not gonna survive that. And then what the toughest crops will last the longest. And in the description, I'm gonna put a whole list of all the crops I've mentioned here and what temperature I would recommend harvesting before. So for example, these radishes, as soon as I see temperatures below 25 degrees Fahrenheit, I would like to harvest all of them and store them for the winter. At that point, it's not worth keeping them in the field. But all of these crops will be harvested slowly but surely over the next six weeks and really extend our harvest and the value of this land. And each crop has a different level of cold tolerance. So that's why you do it that way. And this looks like this because I've had experience with every single one of these crops and I know when to harvest it. Because if you harvest radishes past the point that it's wise to harvest them, they're gonna get kind of mushy and not usable. So we're harvesting everything right before it gets too cold to ruin the crop basically. And this is quite an array of, of food here that didn't require any canning or any extra effort from us. All we had to do was plant it and grow it to maturity. And from a farming perspective, the reason why I love this technique and why I love fall gardening is because it is so easy compared to a lot of other things we have to do to grow a crop on the farm. And that means it's a lot easier for you to do in your garden too. All you have to do is pay attention to those starting dates, grow the crop, pay attention to the weather every week in starting around November, check your 10 day forecast. If you see 25 degrees nighttime temperatures in your forecast, Make sure you harvest all the crops that need to be harvested. And then same for 20 degrees, 15 degrees, 10 degrees, which usually happens fairly gradually. Sometimes in Wyoming it doesn't and that sucks, but it's pretty rare. Almost always you get a gradual nighttime decline in temperatures and you get this slow flow of food at a time of year when there's not as much food coming off the field. Well, there's nothing coming off the field. Nothing's growing anymore. Everything is just getting harvested slowly. And we use the exact same technique to grow and harvest all of our winter crops and all the greenhouses behind me too. It's just different dates basically and a little bit more protection, but it's the same idea. And it's just, it's very comforting to me to know that once I see all of these crops growing in July and August, that we're gonna have this abundance at this time of year because for my business, that means a lot more money. That really doesn't require a lot of effort anymore. It's all growing and ready to go. And I know that it will survive 
pretty deep into the late fall, early winter. And it's just relaxing. So I don't like in the summertime for us to get crops to bring to market, it's a lot more stressful. Because, like say from May to July, that is a lot more stressful because we are planting and harvesting like crazy because the crops we're harvesting are growing way faster. There's a lot more stress involved with cilantro in the summertime because it can grow too fast and bolt a lot faster. Same with almost everything else here. This has a lot more problems. This arugula has a lot more problems in the summertime than it does now. Most of the crops that our farm makes money on are much more stressful to grow in the heat because they grow a lot faster and a lot more things go wrong. So fall is a lot more relaxing to me because all it is is just harvesting when you need it. And there's almost no waste that way. So I just harvest what I think I could sell that week. And it's the same thing for you in your garden. If you have your garden full of all these crops, you don't have to harvest them all at once. You just harvest them slowly when you need them for a dinner every day. And it's a lot less work than canning or freezing or a lot of traditional food preservation techniques. It's just paying attention to the weather and harvesting, which to me is a lot less work than canning and freezing. So to me, this is the ultimate food storage technique is growing these kinds of crops and just leaving them in the ground until it's too cold for them and then harvesting them. You know, and you're gonna have problems with this if you do have a foot of snow on the ground. That's a big issue that certain places in the north are gonna have problems with. But even, I used to live in Illinois and we get two feet of snow every winter. Usually that didn't start getting serious until at least December. So you still have all of November to be harvesting outside. And things like carrots are the toughest of all of these things. You, you know, you just need to harvest them before the ground gets too frozen for you to dig them up and then they get damaged and stuff. So this is such a relaxing way to produce an abundance of food. You just gotta pay attention to that timing and it really doesn't take a lot of time even in the summer. When we're seeding all of this stuff in our nursery or in the ground, it doesn't take that much time per week. But we break it up every week so it's a little bit of time every single week, you know? For us to plant five beds, it takes like two hours or something which for that's a huge amount you know for your garden it will take you five minutes so it two hours for us on the farm is not a lot of time to produce thousands of dollars in vegetables so the same concept works for you in your garden it doesn't take a lot of time if you break it down and do it religiously every single week it's really just comes down to discipline discipline of paying attention to those planting dates and staying true to them is really going to be where you have the success I'm talking about without a lot of stress and effort. To me, that's a lot easier than spending a whole weekend in September canning and freezing everything in your garden because you're worried that it's all going to go bad. This is a lot easier to me. And the number one reason why I love this style of storing food is it tastes way better than the summer especially carrots. So everything I've mentioned in this video tastes so much sweeter once it's been frosted a few too many times. We sell carrots in the wintertime using this exact method and we call them carrot candy carrots because they taste like candy. They are so much sweeter than the carrots we grow in the summer because all of these plants are frost hardy and to a different degrees, but they all have sugars in them that concentrate to keep their integrity through those cold nights, especially carrots. All that sugar in the carrot gets concentrated and so much sweeter. This is the huge differentiator between food that you grew yourself and the grocery store. If you live in the northern climates like I do, the carrots that you buy in the store in the wintertime are gonna be grown in California and they will not even be close to as sweet as the ones I'm talking about. Everything grown in California won't be as frosted, if at all, because it's usually central to Southern California. They'll have barely any frosts, if at all. And you won't get this experience. This is something that I didn't really appreciate till I started growing my own stuff and working with other people that grew food because 
you can't get this experience unless you grow in a cold climate. If you live in the South, you're never gonna know what I'm talking about. Well, that's not true. I'm sure there is, there's frosts in a lot of the South that do, do concentrate the sugars. But the point I'm making is not the South, it's the stuff that you get at the store will never be like this. The flavor is just out of this world. And it's one of the reasons why the more and more I grow in Wyoming, I love growing here because I have a totally unique product that you cannot get anywhere else by selling these vegetables. Once they have been through our winter and acclimated to our winter, it's a flavor that you cannot buy anywhere else. And you can have that experience in your garden if you live in the northern climates and you pay attention to the cold temperatures that I mentioned in the description below. All you got to do is pay attention to those and look at your weekly 10 day forecast. And if you see those temperatures, harvest right before them because after those temperatures get lower, they could damage your crops. But it will be so much sweeter. Everything I'm mentioned in this video will be so much sweeter if you let it get frosted a whole bunch of times before you harvest it, especially things like kale, chard, spinach. It's a different experience. It makes you want to eat all those vegetables. And if you're like most people, you probably don't like kale that much, but kale that's been frosted many times is a totally different experience, especially carrots. So just some food for thought. And so if any of my babbling is making sense to you, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. If you've had experience with what I'm talking about in your climate, I would love to know about it. And hit one of those thumbs, depending on whether you like or dislike this video. And if you're serious about growing food like this in your backyard, be sure to check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below. I show you how to set up a no dig version of this farm in your backyard in as little as 250 square feet in four easy steps. And if you're really serious, check out my garden course at the link in the description where I spend seven hours with you in video format explaining how to set up a no dig version of this, where I go over everything from plant spacing, seeding times, pests, weeds, everything you need to know from seed to harvest to grow your own food in your backyard. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.